Would you love to regularly attract your perfect clients to want to come and do business with you? Would you love those dream clients to be knocking on the door and asking to work with you? Yes, I am going to talk to you about defining your ideal client. But I know that lots of you will be sitting thinking, I have done this to death, it doesn't work for me, the approach is too templated, the whole thing feels manipulative, um, I'm constantly thinking I'm just going to put off 95% of the people that would come and work for me, I just don't like it. So I want to help you, I hope, think about this in a slightly different way today. Because the whole purpose of the of, of however you do an ideal client exercise or even just in the the principles of actually defining who your ideal client is who that perfect person is that you want to work with you the whole point really of doing that is to attract these people to you you want those people to be drawn to you you want them to read what you're saying to hear your message and the key thing you're looking for is for them to say she gets it he understands they know exactly what I'm going through, they get it. If that customer hears something you say or reads something you say and they think she gets it, then you will attract those perfect clients to you. So you're not gonna attract them by knowing that your ideal client is called Dave, he drinks San Miguel Lager, he's got a Labradoodle, um, his wife's called Betty and they've got two kids called Gertrude and Harry. Yes, these things are interesting and yes, they help to make that person a bit more real, but actually those things are trivial and relatively unimportant. The key thing you want to think about is connection. So it's not about what is the pain point in Dave's business? What is his current issue that I can solve for him? Because you're on the wrong level there for me at that point. That's not about connection. And that could be, that might be where you start to think marketing feels a bit manipulative. I need to find Dave's pain point and I need to twist the knife. I am laughing now at all the Daves that might be watching this video and feeling slightly harassed by me already, but never mind. Um, but what you really want to think about is you want Dave to read something you say and go, yeah, she's written that about me. She's filmed that video for me. So you don't want to think about pain points you want to think about what does it all mean so let's take a, a simple example that um let's say you have a fabulous service where you could help dave put into place in his business a really accurate cash flow forecast that would completely transform his finances and help him sleep peacefully at night the thing is dave's not lying in bed at night thinking I really wish I had an accurate cash flow forecast. But Dave might be lying awake at night thinking, have I got enough money in the business to pay the wages at the end of this month? If there isn't enough money coming in, who is it that I'm gonna not pay? Who am I gonna leave till last? Does this mean that I'm gonna have to make Betty in accounts redundant? God, if I have to make Betty redundant, what am I going to say to her? And what's she going to say? How is she going to take it? Is she going to cry? Is she going to go home and tell her husband, Carl, all about it? And is Carl going to think I'm a complete dick? It's getting to that level of understanding with your customer. That's where you really want to try and get to. Now, I am not suggesting that we get into the depths of everybody's problems and then we do go into the realms of manipulation. But what I'm saying is, when you understand the specific words that your customer uses and the specific feelings that they're going through, the things that are whizzing around in their head that are driving them slightly nuts, and they might be positive things. You know, it could be that they really want to achieve something and they're struggling to get there. So it's not all about pain points and negative things at all but it's about what are those frustrations, the niggles, the thing that's just getting in the way and how does that play out for them? What are the things that, you know, the crazy conversations that they're having with themselves that they wish they could put a lid on? If you can get to that level of detail, that's the point where you will create a really strong connection with these people. And that's what you want, it's connection. Now I should say, you're only gonna create that connection if you're the type of person that your ideal client really likes and wants to work with. So you've got to factor all of that in. If they're a perfect client for you, why are you the perfect supplier for them? Understand that as much as you understand their pain points, but really think, about that connection and what it absolutely looks and feels and tastes like 
to this perfect customer in their business or in their life right here, right now that you can actually help with. Think about connection and then you will attract those perfect clients towards you. And if you're still sitting there thinking, I think all this ideal client stuff is a load of baloney and it doesn't work for me, then I'd love to have a conversation with you about that and see if I can help you maybe maybe say fall in love with the ideal client exercise is going too far, um, but find a way to actually apply it in your business that you enjoy and feel comfortable with. If that sounds good, get in touch with me and let's have a chat.